There are many injustices in the world. Some can be clearly understood with a little patience and critical inspection. It is natural when one battles the foolishness of others to become fatigued and to have bouts of sorrow. That is not necessarily self-indulgent. If you stay too long in this place, it will turn to self-pity. Self-pity is a key ingredient in the formula for unhappiness. An empowering approach to tackling challenges is to reject shame for past failures, not accepting roadblocks placed in your path by others, and taking responsibility for one's life. Many are commonly told that it is about working hard, that if you do not connect with the conventional mental imagery that you will blend in, and surely this will change your reality. This is partly true. A person that refuses to allow the world to define him or her will normally have intestinal fortitude. This, along with discernment, solid problem-solving skills, and a positive attitude will get you far. It does not eliminate the ever-present barriers of skin color, disability, and gender. There are many who relate to the world exclusively via their body and culture. On one hand, this is completely unreasonable because you are using a mental filter based on the physical attributes of an organic vehicle and the products of other people's creation, otherwise known as your culture. We can think of culture as elements placed in a nutrient medium and the result is a product that has cultivated from this process. So elements are likened to other people's values and knowledge. The nutrient medium would be a restricted area. Neither is of your making, culture, or your body. It is what you are born with and what others have fostered. The other side of the coin is the body acts like a jailer. It carries the evidence of your crimes. It shoulders the burden of others' cognitions. This is something you can detach from within your mind, but others will constantly attempt to fixate you to it. We can easily see this in the advertisement world, talk radio, educational system, etc. Dealing with injustices that revolve around not being able to flee your skin and all it brings is a harsh reality. Development is not solely about forming a separate, independent self. It is also about taking the ability to participate actively in relationships with others. Everything is relationship, whether that be within or outside of self. Our societal models pay lip service to relatedness and the importance of community, but actually encourages disconnection, apathy, hyper-individualism, and insalubrious competition. These societal models suffer even more from challenges in communication. Communicative challenges occur when realities that are not even present in another's experience is devalued and important factors discarded. This often leads to dismissing the individual's experience. This does not suggest one should be overly sensitive to obvious wallowing in negativity and the blaming of others. It demands we do not use simple answers when dealing with inherently complex problems. Little in this world is truly a matter of extremes, black or white, right or wrong. I think, and I may be wrong, that the vast majority of experiences come in varying shades of gray. It is common when dealing with the supposed ethnic complexities of minorities 
that one is typecast, addressing mounting economic difficulties and the challenges one may have. Due to one's body baggage and culture, it's not an exercise in who is the best in the blame game. It is not the practicing of scapegoating and the blaming of the majority for one's inability to be a success. Success here equates to one with the most toys. Success here is also the accruement of metal and paper currency that is manufactured out of thin air. It is not always one's choice to fail. When someone tells you this, it is obviously a sign that they are either one, self-restricted by blinders, or two, they are using a binocular trick to sell you a wispy mental image of reality. The minorities that chooses to persevere face a dual actuality. They have the unique task of dealing with various obstacles that is unique to their experience. You can look at this as obstacles that revolve around the characteristics of how the majority and even other minorities see them. Many times, members of the majority or minority that subscribe to these defaming mental images have consumed formulatic conceptions. The other road in this dual actuality shows that they may not have to work twice as hard due to shared socioeconomic standing. It appears we reside in a world that often sees the possessing of traits commonly attribute to minorities as horrific, alarming, and undesirable. When considering this, you can hopefully relate to the saying, a black person has to work twice as hard to achieve the same as their white counterpart does, assuming all things are equal. Hmm, this may still have validity, but was certainly more accurate in the past due to the overt detestable behavior of some. Yes, yes, this is a generalization but maybe we should not readily discard it without examination. If one was solely judged on the content of one's character, this would not be worth consideration. This is not our reality, however. Think about this. Many people conflate what is logical and what is rational. Remember, cognitive distortions can be logical, but that does not make them rational. Oppression is not a myth. Many minorities are externally purposefully burdened mentally and psychologically. There is also unjust and cruel exercises of authority or power witnessed every day. This is the definition of oppression. So, when we make the absolute comments that blacks are not oppressed, women are not oppressed, gays are not oppressed, we are setting ourselves up for failure. The group may not suffer the same manner of oppression as those that preceded them. This does not invalidate that it occurs. Some people want to eliminate the idea of oppression to make the examination of reality more manageable. Some people want to eliminate the idea of oppression to make the examination of reality more manageable. Let me give you an example. One can say that blacks are not oppressed as they were prior to the civil rights movement. This cannot be controverted. People do oppress other people due to belief systems they employ. This also cannot be refuted. This is not legislated away or diminished because the parental figures of the state say so. What happens is behavior normally changes form so one can be within the law. So yes, there are minorities that are still oppressed, despite the obvious outward improvements made within America. When we are talking about minorities, that is not code for black people, okay?
We can see how reality is discarded. Why is it discarded, you ask? Well, because it is a growing fad for the majority to, one, embrace the victim role that they claim they detest in, or two, they refuse to witness the shift in dynamics. Now that certain subgroups of the majority is facing certain oppressive reality experiences, shared experience within the majority group does not eliminate the act of oppression within the minority group. Feel free to ignore any experience you cannot relate to or that shakes your confirmatory bias. We need to note when one is reporting truth versus crying wolf. Many minorities understand that in today's world, any complaint against the majority will be seen as means for them to advance due to capitalizing off of the subjugation from others within their group. It is not a reality that any self-respecting person would encourage. Minorities do not have to resort to temper tantrums and retreat to the parental figure, that would be government, to resolve issues between the siblings, that would be various groups within the human family. Unfortunately, some feel this is their only alternative. Why? Because there is an ever-increasing popularity of superficial examination. This process allows the delivery of feel-good messages, especially on YouTube and other mediums that are like this, to sidestep the ugliness life can bring with it. Inherent equality, inherent equality, inherent equality does not exist. This does not mean we should not strive towards relating to others as equals. I am of the opinion we do not treat people as inferior even if they do not measure up to our capabilities. Inequality should not remove the need to embrace humane treatment. People can be amazingly resourceful and can overcome mountains of discrimination by using innate and developed abilities. It pays greater profits than government intervention. Unfortunately, this is not where we are at. Many humans need that worn out paradigm of mommy lawmaker and daddy law enforcer, which results in cost much greater than often calculated.